What's up, Mill Simps? Welcome to the channel where we give away a Steam key at the end of the week every week. So as you may have noticed, Postscriptum has added some more graphical options for you to fine-tune your visual experience with Postscriptum. Now, some of you, including myself in the past, have been using the completely wrong settings considering the machine you're running the game on. Now, this was actually a very requested video, something I've had people walk up to me in the game and tell me to make. And I believe one of my channel members asked me to make it so that was the final straw here I am and I've done a little bit of research for you guys and with a little tweaking we are gonna get your graphical settings fine-tuned and dialed in to work best with whatever machine you are playing the game on all right, so first things first, we got to find out what kind of system you are running on because we are going to set these graphical settings according to whether you're on a high-end PC, a low-end PC, or a mid-tier PC. Now, the two main factors are going to be your CPU, your central processing unit, and your GPU, your graphic processing unit. Starting with the CPU, if you're running an AMD Ryzen 3 or an Intel i3, you're a low-end. 5, mid-tier, 7, high-end, and 9, I am so jealous. Now, if you have an X, XT, or K at the end of it, that just means it's a slightly better version than the stock chip. Same thing with the GPUs. Both AMD and Intel use the same nomenclature. Basically, your first number indicates the generation. The last two digits is going to tell you how powerful the graphics card is within that specific generation. Here's roughly what they mean. Also, keep in mind, cards with the suffix TI or XT typically means it's more powerful than the standard version. All right, so now that we've figured out what tier rig you're bringing to the field, let's get started figuring out exactly what graphics settings will be best for your machine. All right, so now that you've navigated to the video section of the settings or options menu, the first thing you're going to see is resolution. You're going to want that to be whatever your native resolution for your PC is, which is typically or hopefully at least 1080p or 1920 by 1080. Now, if you're on a 1440p, that's probably a good indicator that you're on a high-end PC. Now, windowed mode is typically preference, although I've heard full screen might give you a fraction of a fraction of of an FPS boost, but really whatever you want here, anything goes. Now we have graphics quality. Now this is pretty straightforward. If you're on a low end PC, you're going to want to use the low preset. A medium PC, you can kind of toy with medium or high. Now if frames aren't really that important to you and you can deal with 30 frames a second or less like you're playing Goldeneye on N64, you could even run Epic. But typically only high end PC should be running Epic. Now V-Sync, almost everybody's going to Want to leave that off there are rare occasions you want to use that if you are on a low tier pc you might want to look into that but i'm not going to spend time on that that's for another channel now max fps you're going to want to set to whatever refresh rate your pc is so if you got a 60 hertz like most low or mid tiers have you're going to set it at 60. if you're running a 144 hertz monitor you're going to want to set it at 144 or really just to be safe slide the bar all the way to the right and move on to gamma gamma is your bright and you're not going to be able to change this once in game now unless you have some overly dark monitor leave this at 2.20 in fact a lot of communities that do events and stuff they're going to want you to have that on 220 so that nobody has an advantage on nighttime maps now if you haven't already click the show advanced box and the first thing we're going to see is screen sharpening and really this is something you're going to want to mess with last now let's say we get everything set up and you still have some frames to spare this is when you slide it from 50 up to 70 or 80 or even more if you want making for a crisper or sharper image now anti-aliasing almost everybody should be using taa or temporal only my low-end guys are going to be clicking fxaa for my poor little mill simps running on freaking toasters with like two gigabytes of vram there is a special setting just for you coming up you guys pretty much don't have to worry about any of this now super sampling low mid even some high guys Probably gonna want to leave this off. Now, if you're like me and rather have 
have a prettier image and less frames, you can go ahead and up this to 1.25, even one and a half. Now, if you're on an i9 or Ryzen 9 with a 3090, sure, up it all the way. But 98% of you should leave this on off. When it comes to textures, like we said before, it's pretty much straightforward. Low guys on low, medium guys on medium to high, and only my high tier guys are on epic. Now, some of you mid tier guys might be able to pull off epic and only lose a handful of frames. Again, this is preference. Now, effects is like gamma. You will not be able to change this in game and tinker with it. So whatever you set it at in the menu, it's gonna stay at. This is the only option that has a setting higher than epic cinematic. And like you guessed, only the highest of tiers should be messing with that. Next up, we have view distance. Now, this is one of those that if you'd like, set it on one setting higher than the rest. Now, this is just a personal suggestion from Boogie himself. So if you're on a low end, put it on medium, maybe even high, as this regulates how far you will see dynamic mesh, or in layman's terms, the higher the setting, the farther out images will actually be created. So if you have it on low, there could be a tree five, 600 meters out that won't even show up, as to save you performance, of course. But being that this game is all about engaging at a distance, that's the only reason why I say have it one up further than the rest. Foliage again, set it accordingly. However, this is something you can play with. Pick whichever one and check out what it does to your frames. Oh my, how'd I forget? Within the main game menu, at the very bottom right, there's an option to turn on or display your FPS. Also, you can press console or your tilde key and type in stat space FPS. Oh, I know that works on squad. It should work in postscriptum. Next one is shadows. This one is rather important as you can save a lot of frames by lowering this. However, if you're like me, I want a pretty picture, I'm gonna set it high. Now, depth of field, this is one of those things that kind of spruces up the picture quality. This is something only people with frames to spare is going to use. So again, the majority of you keep this off. Anisotropic filtering. This basically smooths out an image when it comes to motion. I know some high-end guys that even set this low or just leave it on 8. Toy with this one. See what you like best. Sometimes I lower it to 4. However, the lower you go, the more kind of trailing you'll see when things are in motion. Next up, we have Bloom. Now, everybody knows what Bloom is. This, of course, is a graphic rendering technique that changed lighting in all of gaming. Kind of just puts a little sheen on everything. Really spruces up the entire image. Now, I recommend even my mid-tier to high-tier guys using this. If you're low-tier and desperate for frames, unclick this. Lens flare, this pretty much adds that effect that makes it look all spiffy when the sun's in your eye. I know a lot of high-end guys that leave this unclicked because they just don't like the effect. This is something real hardcore or try-hard guys will leave unclicked, but if you're like me and want a pretty image, click it. Now this uses very little frames. Only my low-end guys should be worrying about this one really hindering their performance. If you want to save a frame, half a frame, sure, leave it unclicked. Motion blur. Now this, they say, sharpens up the image that you see while you're looking around or your head is moving. Say you're looking from left to right. During that movement, motion blur is supposed to sharpen up the image. Now really, most people say this also is just preference. It does come at the cost of a few frames. So if you're desperate for frames, leave this unclicked. And then of course, below that is the slider. This is one of those things that you will not be able to change in game. You'll have to toy with it from the menu. Screen space reflection. This is another one of those little graphical techniques that makes your image just look more realistic. Low tier guys, leave this unclicked, of course. Everybody else, click it. However, if you're a mid tier guy, a competitive try hard, probably unclick this. However, the better image sometimes helps me spot enemies. So again, this is preference. Volumetric Fog. For any of you guys that have been playing for a while, you remember a graphic setting called Distance Shadows. Think of this as that. Now, with it unclicked, you'll get better frames. However, with this on, the fog is more 3D, for lack of a better word. Now, look at this image on Magano. Everything close up, you can't really tell, but at a far distance, it's almost like hazy, and you can't really see shadows. Of course, this is going to save frames, but now look at it 
it clicked on. You can see the tree shadows better. It's almost a brighter image or more clear. If you're low in, you're probably going to want to leave this unclicked. And if you're a try hard doing whatever you can for frames, you could also leave it unclicked. However, as you can see here, you're probably going to be able to spot enemies better, I would think, with this on. Ambient occlusion. Another graphical technique that's came out within the last century, <laughs> a couple decades. This is another kind of lighting buff. With this on, shadows look better and the overall image just looks much more realistic. Like a lot of these options before AO, only my low tier guy should have this unclick. If you're mid tier, desperate for frames, also unclick. But come on, take a look at it off and on, you tell me. I think it's worth the few frames. Preload textures. This is a big one that people are not utilizing. Now, you gotta look at the specs of your GPU. If you have four VRAM or less, definitely do not click this. Now, if you have six VRAM or more, click this. Because what it's gonna do is at the beginning of the game, it may take a little bit longer to load. However, it's gonna have all the textures on hand and not have to stream them in and out, which of course gives you a big boost in frames. All right, now that's the end of it for most of us however the newest thing with the 4.27 engine upgrade they added two little nifty tricks that are kind of new to the scene one of them for my really high-end guys and one of them for my really low-end guys starting with dlss now i'm pretty sure you gotta have a 30 series card or higher which you know isn't even out yet but dlss is supposed to maintain almost the current image yet give damn near double in frames again you had to have a 3060 3080 3090 to use this option now nis is a little technique and trick that will take the worst of machines we're talking toasters and really give you a giant boost in frames however your image quality is going to be very lacking there is no ao no anti-aliasing no bloom no screen space reflection none of that it'll be an fxaa image or should i just say fx it'll be very pixelated however people who can barely run half-life 2 will be able to run it with this setting pretty cool now if i'm in a competition i'd hate to have this guy on my team <laughs> anyway that about finishes it up if you know more about this please leave it down in the comments as i am no pro by any means or even better come through to the discord we would love for you to share your knowledge same thing with people that have questions or want to know more drop it down in the comments let's get some conversation going Better yet, come through to the Discord. Also, to enter the weekly giveaway, you're gonna have to be a part of our little Boogie 5 Discord. Of course, it's linked below. To enter, you just gotta like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, of course, drop a comment, and leave your Discord name and number in the comment. That's gonna be your ticket stub. I wanna give a shout out to my channel members, the Millsent Minions. All three tiers get their name in the hat twice for every week's Steam Key giveaway. That's right, for as little as 25 cents a week, we'll give you a little boost when it comes to winning free games right now we got easy red 2 mud and blood and fire and steel but sometimes we get big old blockbuster games like postscriptum itself we've given away probably 30 copies on this channel so far again thank you for the support from my channel members my inspiration for the rest of you liking commenting just interacting with the community it means more than you know thank you guys so much we're barreling towards 5,000 subscribers let's see if we can hit it by the end of the year get in on the giveaway i'm sick of the same four or five people winning every darn key they pretty much have every key i had to offer somebody else has got to win damn it <laughs> all right boys i'll see you in the next one y'all be good to each other